Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Why don't you all stand and we'll go ahead and open in prayer. It's okay. Um, here on a Wednesday night, we're going to talk a little bit more about our faith, which is the faith that we talked about Sunday morning and believe the Lord for some great things, even in the midst <clears throat> of what looks like some tough situations. We're going to believe the Lord to bless and bring us through. Amen. So let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to bless. And we are thankful that he said where two or more are gathered in his name, he's here in the midst of us. Amen. That is faith also to believe that he's actually here with us. And we'll talk about some other areas uh, in faith tonight as we go along. So Father, we thank you for this night. And Lord, it's a new night. It's a night we've not had before. And uh, Father, we're expecting great and mighty things, even as some of us may be just busy about some of the things of our lives and what's going on around us right now. But Lord, you can still open doors. You can change situations. Uh, Father, you can send people in our paths and put us in someone else's path. And Father, you can bring your promises to pass and your blessings in every one of our lives. And Lord, we're thankful for that, and we're thankful for our very lives. Uh, and our nation celebrates Thanksgiving Day, uh, time to be thankful, which is pretty much turned into a big party. But Lord, we're thankful for what you've done for every one of us. And I just pray that we continue to have thanks in our hearts unto God for what he has done and how you brought us through and how you're bringing us through even now. Uh, so we thank you, and as we pray tonight, and we're going to hear the word, thank you for everybody that's listening in, uh, some from here in the church, others from outside. We pray that they be blessed and stirred, and the power of this gospel, which is the very power of God unto salvation, work in every one of our lives. We thank you for it and give you the praise. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. We'll say hello to somebody again tonight. And uh, again, if the right side, yes, we have people over on the right side. And Sunday we had people over in the wings, uh, which was a blessing. It was a lot of folks here, even in the midst of everything going on. So how's everybody doing? Good. You're doing okay tonight. And even though you're dealing maybe with some things that you're not used to, some of them you're kind of getting used to, aren't you? Uh, they've become what looks like the norm for right now. So uh, we thank the Lord for how we can adapt to things when we have to. And it makes me think all the time about some of these men that we hear of the persecuted church. Some of them I've been very blessed to meet. In fact, we had a few of them here with us. You all got to meet also. Um, how they've had to adapt in their lives to situations, uh, to being away from family and friends and even the ministry and the people, yet the Lord kept them in all those things. Amen? And so we know it's possible for all of us also uh, to have that type of a mindset and a heart and relationship. And I know my microphone wasn't on, so am I on now? Okay. I don't know if we need it. I'm good. Okay. Uh, you could turn it down in the house a little bit so it doesn't echo in the receiver here. So tonight we're going to follow up with what we talked about on Sunday morning. And if you remember, we talked about Hebrews uh, chapter 1035 a little bit, that we should not cast away our confidence. Remember that? Hebrews 10. Uh, 35, And I want to just remind all of us tonight, all of us here and those of you that are listening in, our confidence is not in ourselves. Our confidence is in Christ Jesus, the work of the cross, and what the Father has done for us. Amen. It's not in ourself. We're not self-sufficient. We're not... Uh, esteeming ourselves and we're not uh, trusting in what we can come up with we are casting not our confidence casting not away our confidence which is in the Lord Jesus in what he can do for us and in the promises of what the father has said 
So tonight I want to just start with Hebrews 10, 29. And it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. You're all very familiar with that scripture. He's saying, hold fast the profession of our faith. We talked about uh, tonight, we would say about areas where faith should affect our lives. One of those areas is our confession, our profession, our speech, which is all similar, synonymous. So hold fast the profession of our faith. And we talked about Sunday morning that our faith is that faith as is described in the scripture, the faith of Jesus Christ, not just a faith or faith in something out here in the world or faith in some God, whatever he may be, but faith in the Lord, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, our Savior, Jesus. So he says, we're to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And as we read through the scripture, we see over and over again how anything the Lord promised to his people, he brought to pass. Even at times when they rebelled, when they went off and served other gods, uh, he told them over and over, if you will repent, if you will return, and so many times as we're talking about confess, when you look back through the scripture, he told them, if you will confess your sin. And what is it in the book of James chapter 5? I think, think he says to us, confess your faults one to another. Acknowledge our weaknesses. Acknowledge in some areas we need help. Uh, as I get in through this, since I'm saying this right now, I wanted to talk just briefly about uh, some of the humility we need to have even in our conversation. You know, a lot of times we may think we've heard from the Lord. And I'll give you an example here. This goes way back to my first couple of years after I came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Uh, we were going on a trip to Israel and we were leaving from the Youngstown airport. So that tells you how long ago that was. Um, but someone came to the airport and believed that God had told them that there was going to be an extra ticket when it was time to go. And so he brought a suitcase and he got there and waited a little bit. And I remember our pastor uh, went up to him and asked him, you know, what, what are you doing sort of? And it was a decent conversation. And the man said, well, I believe the Lord may have told me that there's going to be an extra ticket and I could go on the trip. And I still remember the pastor saying, listen, I know what you're doing and it's good. He knew he was trying to hear from the Lord and he said, but there isn't a ticket extra. And he said, so I appreciate what you're doing. And the fellow said, well, okay. He didn't say, no, there has to be a ticket. God has to do this. That had to be God. It was a very humble conversation on both sides. And so I learned something from that back when I was, what, maybe 22 years old, that there has to always be room for people to make mistakes in some of these things in the Lord where they may think they've heard from the Lord and they've got to try it out a little bit. And what, what that is, that is actually acting out in faith. And many times people are afraid to do anything like that because I might be embarrassed or it might not have been the Lord. Well, you know, you never know sometimes until you try. Uh, the thing about that is to have that humility where I think it's the Lord, but I could be wrong. Um, it gets us a lot further in this walk and relationship. So just thinking of these things. I hope you can get something out of that, and it's good to remember all the time. We've seen a lot of people who insisted they heard from God, and, and, and maybe in some areas they did at various times, and maybe just at this one point, no, sorry, I don't think that was the Lord. I think 
You may have thought that up or you heard something said or somewhere along the line you wanted this to happen. And so we have to have room for that in every one of our relationships uh, to where we realize that if people are actually trying to hear from the Lord, they may make mistakes. And so to pray in those areas, but he says, hold fast our profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised. And again, we talked about Sunday morning, not casting away our confidence. Now that man could have said, that's it. I'll never do that again. I'll never try that again. I'll never say, God, speak to me. But no, you, you hold on to that confidence. You don't cast it away. Yes, God could speak to any one of us at any point in time. Okay, is that a point well taken? Okay, so Isaiah 53, very famous scripture for all of us uh, and the Jewish people. You know, as I was reading through this again tonight and I think yesterday, just the idea of what we look at here, but look at what it says in the beginning. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And every time I read this, what I get out of it is, if I believe the report, I should be looking for the arm of the Lord to be revealed. Now we know that in this, we believe it's talking about the coming of the Messiah, some of the things he's going to suffer, the burden he's going to take on for all of us, and how he is going to be looked at as though he's cursed of God, yet he's the blessing of God in it all. But it says, who has believed our report? When we read in Hebrews 11, the chapter we call the Hall of Faith sometimes, and you look down through all the things that these men and women did and how they believed the Lord and what happened for them, the blessings and the promises that were fulfilled, he's saying here, who has believed our report? Now I know in Isaiah 53, we're talking about the Messiah, but in all these things, it's the Messiah that brings our blessing, that opens the door for our salvation. So who has believed our report? Who's taking the word of God and the promises of God and looking for the arm of the Lord to be revealed? Because if we're really believing the Lord, we should see things happen to where we say, it's got to be God. Can't any other way it came to pass. Can't be any other way it came to pass uh, in looking at all these things. Okay? Amen? Amen? Yeah, that's good. I want to make sure you're still alive. I know the heat's up in here. Uh, we didn't want anybody to be cold. We were just having a big snowstorm yesterday. Today it warmed up some. The snow's melting away. It's winter time. Even though we've got everything else going on, we still have to look at snow. Should be like down south somewhere. It's warm all the time. Okay, so who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So if we believe the report of the Lord in every situation we're looking at, uh, you all have your Bibles here. Open to Hebrews 11 real quick. And I'll have you do this for Sunday morning, and we'll go back through Hebrews 11. But what I'd like you to do, and I've done this myself over and over at various times. If you read down through Hebrews 11, you should be able to pick out of almost every verse or every couple of verses an area where there's either a promise, a blessing, an open door, a, a revealing of what we need to do and how we need to be. There's so many of these things. Uh, I won't go through them now, although I have a list right here just of the first 10 or 12 verses uh, in some of those areas. And as we talk about faith, I want to remind you tonight also, as you're looking at Hebrews 11, and as you're going to write some of those things down between now and Sunday, that Romans 12, 3 tells us that the Lord has given to every man a measure, or not a measure, the measure of faith. In other words, what we need, he's already given to us. Remember Sunday we read in the scripture about the mustard seed. 
and about if you'll have faith as a mustard seed. So even if it's a mustard seed, which is one of the tiniest seeds there is, that faith is the measure of faith that the Lord has given you to accomplish everything you need to do. And then, of course, we talk about what the scripture says, where uh, we build ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Right? So he's given us that measure of faith, but we can build that up as we pray in the Spirit. And that's what the scripture denotes. So, anyway, for Sunday morning, we'll go through that. We'll go through Hebrews 11, and we'll look at some of those areas, and you'll be able to tell me what you got out of it, and I'm going to expect some responses uh, so that we can go through some of those areas, and then I'll tell you afterwards what I wrote down, and probably we'll hear a lot of similarities, which is fine. So, who's believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and you'll remember this scripture. It's also uh, something that is written by the psalm, psalmist in Psalm 116, verse 10. Psalm, one verse, or psalm 116, verse 10, and we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 12 through 14. And Paul says, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. And he was talking about his apostleship and a few things. He says, we having the same spirit of faith. And we know in the book of Corinthians, when it talks about the gifts, it says to some, he's given the gift of faith. So it says here, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. So what we can get from that is what we believe has a great influence on our speech, on what we speak about, on what we confess, on what we profess. When we talk about fruit on a vine, fruit on a tree, uh, fruit of the Spirit in our lives, a lot of our conversation gives away somewhat where we are in all of that. If someone's a murmurer and a complainer, it means the fruit of the Spirit is either very small, the fruit on the vine is very limited, because they murmur, they complain. He says, as I believe, therefore have I spoken. So their belief in some areas is off kilter, is not where it should be. Maybe causing them uh, to not expect anything good to happen. Uh, you know, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday morning, I said I believe some people had the idea that I was sort of anti-America because I made statements that said don't put all your hope in the government don't put all your hope in the president you know don't make it that unless he does this unless he's in office God can't bless his people uh, or provide for us and so on and they were reading my speech but they never asked me where I was in that and so they may have somewhat judged me by some of the things that were being said. And some have done the same thing in, uh, with the prophets and everybody else, and even us in church on a ministry. Well, you're, you're trying to come after me with that because I'm reading scripture or saying something instead of asking, what do you mean by some of those things? Or what is your position on some of those things? And a lot of times we can resolve a lot of issues with each other and amongst ourselves by saying, tell me what you're thinking when you say what you're saying. If somebody's a murmurer and complainer, tell me how you're thinking and why you're thinking that way. Because here's what the scripture says. You all remember Joshua and Caleb, right? 
and the spies, when they went into the land, <clears throat> 10 spies had a terrible report. This could never happen. Those are giants over there, and we look like grasshoppers, and this is not possible, even though God said it. And Joshua and Caleb said, the Lord can give us this. He can bring this to pass. Same thing we talked about two weeks or so ago with King David. All the men of Israel stood there listening to that big Philistine shouting out and cursing Israel with his gods. And David said, no, God can deliver him into our hands, right? It's somewhat the same thing. And so all of us have to be mindful. Are we believing the report? And is the arm of the Lord being revealed to us that we realize our God is able to push back anybody or anything that really tries to come against us, right? And so we believe that we have a confidence about us, not a cocky, arrogant, uh, you know, defiance, but a humility that says, my God is able. As the scripture says, we can boldly say, the Lord is my provider. He'll take care of me. Uh, some will say, like even in a pandemic like this, and the, we know there was a shortage of food things, and there was a shortage of needs, and some would say, well, God will provide for me. And he very well may, may and will if we get to the point of we can't do any of those things for ourselves uh, because we should have had some wisdom to stock up a little bit or to be ready to provide for some of our brothers and sisters that may have needs, various areas like that, how we look at these things. So who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? We read in Isaiah 53, 2 Corinthians 4, death works in us, excuse me, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We could reverse that and say, I've spoken what I believe. And in every situation, if we backtrack on our words, we may find, hmm, that really didn't sound like I believe the Lord to be able to do this for me. Or I believe the Lord to be able to keep me. Or believe the Lord to move on my behalf or that his arm would be stretched out in a situation. I think I need to go back and check my heart and deal with wherever I'm at here. I believed and therefore have I spoken. He was quoting what was written in the Psalms and he said, we also believe and therefore we speak. He's talking about the promises of God knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. That's when we're all brought together in the end. I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord, as the Bible talks about. So we also believe and therefore we speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So we said Sunday morning we would go through some of the areas where our faith will affect us. Our faith should be affecting us in what we say, in what we talk about, in our conversation in our attitude, which is representative, or represented, excuse me, by our conversation. If I never have anything good to say about anybody or anything, it tells me there's a lack inside there that I'm not exercising faith toward God in any of these things. So, um, as we go through here, maybe I could jump to this right now. <clears throat> Somebody may say, you know, I think I have a good idea. I believe the Lord uh, will bless us and, 
here's what I'd like to do and here's what I'd like to try and somebody says oh come on that's impossible or that's a stupid stupid idea well the Bible tells us that all things are possible right it may not be such a great idea but then again it may be something that the Lord is going to use in your life to work you through some things and reveal some things to you and it may never actually look like a great success but in it you may learn some valuable lessons that you'd have never learned any other way and so sometimes again like we mentioned about trying uh, to hear from the Lord and act on that in in areas like these things Sometimes men have tried and tried and tried and never succeeded, but then suddenly they tried their last thing and it became a great success. We read about a lot of men like Edison and these guys who had ideas and finally somehow it came to pass. <clears throat> so if you have faith and somebody says to you, that's impossible, that could never ever happen <clears throat> what your response could very well be is well I'll pray about it and see <coughs> excuse me I'll lift it up to the Lord and I'll ask if I believe it's so I'll continue with it and I hear your counsel I hear your advice <clears throat> I'm not going to say that I'm running rough shot on this and I'm going to make it come to pass but I'm going to pray about it and I'd appreciate if you'd at least pray about it with me and if it's the Lord and it works it could be a very large thing <clears throat> maybe I have shared this before all of a sudden I got dry but there was a time just before cell phones all came out big that uh, everybody was still using that thing called a phone booth Remember pay phones in a phone booth? And uh, we were talking about bacterias back then and diseases, and that was when the HIV was getting real big and <clears throat> AIDS was being talked about quite a bit. And so I had an idea, and it was just to make like a booth that you could throw on a phone when you were in a phone booth and cover the phone so that you wouldn't get any bacteria from the phone putting it up to your mouth and I even talked to a fellow who's a multi multi-millionaire who travels the world <clears throat> because of one product his family came up with and he advised me on what to do and uh, just as I got ready to get it in there and they did me an architectural drawing and I spent a few dollars and it was a lot of money to us as far as where we were uh, and I even got a chemist who was going to put in there an antibacterial material built right in the rubber that would kill bacteria and he was explaining everything to me uh, right then all of a sudden they started pulling pay phones out of pl uh, phone booths because everybody started getting cell phones now in other countries everybody had been using cell phones but here they weren't necessary you had a pay phone almost everywhere you could stop and use the phone anyway so I spent a little bit of money but the fella and this fella was in a big office up up somewhere in New York City and he said it's a great idea try and he told me where to go market it and everything he said it's a great idea he said it could be success well he didn't know that cell phones were gonna pop all over the place all of a sudden everybody was going to have one anyway at least I tried something right it didn't net us anything down the road it cost me a little bit of money back then but anyway all those type of things if we believe the Lord he can show us and I could have had a good friend up there in New York City just by con conversing back and forth so <clears throat> the Bible tells us all things are possible in the Lord and you may say well I don't really know how to bring it about or anything like that but if the Lord has given me this I'm sure there's people that can help me and so it opens the door so 
Remember Joshua and Caleb. They looked at a situation. They said the Lord can do this. The others said the Lord won't do that. And the Lord did do it, didn't he? And later we read that Caleb was of another spirit because he was like perfect in the eyes of the Lord as far as things go. We talked about King David when he was anointed and as a young man, then his father sent him uh, down to the battle of the Philistines there, or not to the battle, he sent him to take his brother's lunch. And <clears throat> you remember I mentioned Eliab, uh, the bro oldest brother of David. He said to David, I know why you're here. But he didn't know why he was there. It revealed something in his heart. David's father had sent him there and David had done right by putting somebody over the sheep, but the elder brother had an attitude. And so how many of you have had somebody come to you and say, I know why you're doing what you're doing. I know why you did that. I know why you act that way. And they have no idea whatsoever. Eliab didn't have any idea that the father had sent David there and that he was bringing them their lunch in the father's place and he happened to see the giant Goliath and said you know our God can take care of this so the brothers had a totally terrible attitude told toward their younger brother um, in all of that we know that the Lord searches our hearts he knows us and so David could be highly offended and in fact he went basically and said, hey, what did I do wrong? But in that, we can relax and rest because, Lord, if I've done nothing wrong, you're aware of why I'm here. I don't know what they're talking about, which again brings me to another situation. I remember some guys had said to me, and I would never use anybody else as your, your example, but said to me, you preached a message one day and you were referring to yourself and I had no idea what they were talking about and so maybe two or three months later a man came up to me and said he had talked to some of these men and said something to them which was very similar to what I ministered on that Sunday that they made that accusation I knew nothing about it but they were verbalizing th what they were saying because of what this man had said. And so when I ministered on it, it was like we were in some kind of cahoots, but I had no idea what he had said. And so there I was going about, Lord, I don't know what they're talking about. Well, the Lord knew what they were talking about because the Lord heard their conversation with the other man, which I didn't hear. Does this make sense? I mean, you understand, are you following me okay? Um, I know sometimes when you talk about things like this, it can be, be a little like you're trying to be some kind of secretive thing. But anyway, so I had no idea why they were thinking what they were thinking. And I just said, Lord, I don't even know what this is about. And so later down the road, I found out was what it was about. And so that's the same sort of thing with young David when he goes to take his brothers to lunch and he sees the battle going. And so it's a misjudging of things. So let, let's go back to what we said. I believed and therefore have I spoken. If we're asking the Lord all the time to be with us. And how many times I've said, uh, as I would say, this goes way back uh, even when I wasn't the pastor of the church and sitting under the pastor, people would say things about church on Sunday mornings. And I would say, well, didn't you pray that God would speak on Sunday morning? Didn't you ask the Lord to direct the message? And so why would you act as though there could be, there was something wrong or, you know, that scripture was, you know, bad to use? And uh, I've had people say to me, not to read certain scriptures and talk about certain things in church. Our former pastor had people say, don't talk about these things. This is what my family does. Well, listen, 
because your family doesn't, doesn't make it right and should never mean that we can't read scripture that talks about whatever you're doing. Scripture is for the edification of the body of Christ, right? For reproof and rebuke and exhortation. And so when we read the scripture, if it puts you or me in a bad light or a bad state, I don't think the scripture's wrong. I think we're wrong, right? And that's how we have to look at things. So I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak knowing, and he's using this in the terms of the resurrection and our be, being gathered together in the Lord. But we should use this in other areas of our lives because what we believe is what we will speak, right? And if that's what we believe, it means then it's going to affect our thinking. And the Bible tells us that as a man thinketh, so is he. So all of this will be tied together and we'll go through how our faith will uh, influence thoughts. And I know this is not new to most of you. You've heard many of these things before, but again, it's a good refresher. So there's another term for the word confess. Uh, it was up there in us, let us hold fast our profession, profession and confession being very similar. And in uh, 1 Timothy 6.12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. And so we know that the promises are true. We're fighting a fight of faith. We're believing the Lord in everything that we do. And that's where, as I said Sunday morning, we have to make sure that we're not just doing the things as though God will probably bless it anyway. We've got to be asking the Lord. Uh, when we talked about ask, seek, knock, the aorist uh, uh, of that is always asking, always seeking, always knocking, always praying, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. So it's an all the time thing. Um, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. He's saying we have to be able to lay hold on it, to take hold of eternal life. Knowing the Father, Jesus said, is eternal life. So he says, lay hold on eternal life, uh, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And some of you, maybe many of you, hopefully me, myself also, we've had a good profession before many witnesses that were faithful of the Lord, were people of God. We are loving and kind, and we also stand up for truth, right? So he says about professing a good profession before many witnesses. Then he says, I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. And before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. So as you and I are professing a good profession, before many witnesses were actually following what Jesus Christ did before Pontius Pilate and the witness that he portrayed. Let me read it again. Uh, Whereunto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate <clears throat> witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The profession of our faith, a good profession before many witnesses. Now, you can have a good witness with somebody. It can go great. But in front of other people, we can kind of put a bad light if we don't hold that profession of faith. 
if we don't continue in all of the circumstances and situations we go through. And in all of this, you know what? It's not like a training session. It's not like a, uh, uh, like I would say when I was in the sales areas that we would go to these sales seminars and they teach you how to do all this. No, it's all this that comes out of the heart of what Jesus has done for every one of us, how we've really been changed to the Lord, that we want to confess, as so many say, Christians are naive. We really want to believe good about everybody. That's not a bad thing, but with that, we have to realize that there is evil, and there are those who are intent on doing evil, and so we have to be a little bit protective of things even though we want to think good. We say, well, I really want to believe what they're saying, but I'm hearing some other things that make that look like it's really not true. We want to give them the benefit of the doubt because of our faith in the Lord. So it affects us even in that way. Uh, Hebrews 11, 13 and 14. <clears throat> it talks about these men of faith and it says, these all died in faith. For some reason, I think that's the wrong scripture, but no, it is. It's the right scripture. Okay. <clears throat> these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. Now, you remember there was a king or a... Uh, governor that stood before Paul and he said you do almost persuade me <clears throat> it says these men were persuaded by the promises and they embraced them and this is where we are today everybody we're going through some things that we've never seen before it's a good time to practice embracing the promises cast not away your confidence Hold fast the profession of your faith and uh, embrace the promises, what the Lord said to us more than ever before. You want to know how to be built up in the Lord? You want to know how to have uh, the peace we talked about Sunday morning that we, wasn't just the emotional peace, but it was being put back in one with the Father as what the scripture said. He said they didn't receive the promises. They saw them afar off and were persuaded of them. When we tell somebody, listen, if you will repent of your sins and turn to the Lord, here's what he will do for you. They can tell if we're persuaded in what we're saying. They can tell if that's real in us that we really believe it. And even if they can't tell, we know the Lord can tell. Amen. So they were persuaded of them and embraced them. Listen, I know what's going on. I know what we're seeing. But here's what the scripture says the Lord will do in this. And this is what I want to hold on to. And yes, I know I'll have to deal with them and I'll have to talk to that and pay that or whatever the case. But the Bible says the Lord will whatever in whatever situation we're in. So they were persuaded. They saw them afar off. How far off is the kingdom of heaven to us right now? But if we're really praying and seeking the Lord, we can see the kingdom, not physically. It's way far off in another place, but we can see it because we know we're going to be there one day. They were persuaded of them and embraced them and it caused something to happen. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Why do, you know, over all the years, how many folks we've heard say, don't get too comfortable here in the world. This isn't your home. You're only passing through. These men not only believe that, but it was what motivated them. It was what they held on to what they took hold of, what they embraced. And they were persuaded that I'm not of this earth. I'm not an alien like aliens are coming from Mars or somewhere else. 
I'm a human who's come to know the Lord, who's been quickened by the Spirit of God, and I understand that because of this walk that he's called us into, the end of this is eternal life with the Father in the kingdom as he's ordained, and so I can see that afar off, and so I'm able to keep myself from a lot of these things in the world. As Jesus overcame the world, we overcome the world. So they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. Say that to somebody in your family. I'm not really of this earth. Of course they're going to say you're a lunatic. You're crazy. You're just like us. We came from the same mother or the same family and the same lineage, whatever. But no, these men had family too. Yet they confessed themselves to be strangers and pilgrims on the earth. In, the, in other words, they knew there was more ahead for them. It says, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They seek another residency. And that's what we are in Christ. We're seeking another residency. We're getting prepared for the place we're going to dwell forevermore. Uh, the nation of God, as we talk about there in, in Peter, uh, you know, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Did I say that right? Anyway, that's where we're going to be. That's who we are, the nation of God. For they that say such things declare they plainly, or declare plainly that they seek a country. Their confession, their profession, the things that they say. And that's where we are. That's why I want every one of you, listen, you may say I got saved a long time ago and you've been with us all this time, but where's your confession? Where's your profession? What are you saying? Is this real in you? Because if it's not, we need to get that uh, first love started again. We need to get back on track. Remember, Israel thought they were serving the Lord and following along, and they would for a while, then they would sin, and they were somewhat cut off from God. And he allowed the enemies to come in and ravage them, to try to get them to turn and repent, and they would repent, and then they would go again. And so it's no big thing to say that some of us may not fall into things and get in that very same mindset. I mean, it is a big thing, don't get me wrong, but you need to repent. You need to make sure, and however long it's been, if there's been 10, 15, 20 years in between there that you really didn't do much in the Lord, your profession was terrible, your confession was terrible, the things you say were terrible, we need to get right with God because the time is short. Remember, we read a week or so ago, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Amen? So for every one of us. Okay. So what country are you seeking? What place are you looking for? What are you really preparing for? Do you really have in your heart and mind that, listen, I know I've got to deal with all this. I've got family. I've got children I love, grandchildren, whatever, great-grands, however far it goes that I care about. But in all of this, this is not our home this is not the end of it all and we have to live like that okay in that confession in acts chapter 19 you remember the sons of skiva and how they tried to cast out the devil the devil said jesus i know and paul i know i don't know who you are and sort of tore them to shreds caused them to run out naked. Uh, then we go into what it says here. This was known to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling at Ephesus in around verse 17, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord was magnified. And it says, And many believed that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And for anybody tonight, listen, 
In a lot of areas, we allow pride to well up in our hearts. We're willing to um, believe or say we believe, but sometimes we're not willing to confess. It says these folks who came out of some pretty wicked things in sorcery and witchcraft, it says they believed, and so they came and they confessed. And what was their confession? What our confession should be, I believe upon the Lord. And then it says they showed their deeds. And you remember, it tells us here that the ones that use curious arts brought their books and burned them before all men, proving their faith. Going back to John the Baptist, bring forth fruits of repentance. And you may say tonight, well, again, what do I have to repent of? Well, that's where we all have to search our hearts here. You know, we, we listen to a lot of this preaching and a lot of this highfalutin teaching on all these great and wonderful things we are, yet people are still living in sinful things and they have terrible attitudes when you talk to them. And they are professing believers, and I believe they may be believers. But they're not being taught that all of these things have an effect on where we are and how we end up in the Lord. Wouldn't it be terrible you did a lot of mighty things and you get to the end and the Lord says, well, you know, your confession that was terrible took away a lot of those things, robbed you a lot of the blessings. I would hate for that to happen. <clears throat> so to try to maintain ourselves and, and showing our faith by what we say, by what we believe, by what we speak. And every one of us needs reminded sometimes that we may sound a little down in the dumps. We may be letting a lot of things bother us that are going on around us, especially in times like these. That's why, you know, you will probably notice, and I've had to say every once in a while, listen, we have to give everybody room right now. We can't assume anything. Keep praying for everybody. Some people are a little fearful. Some are a little, you know, drawn back a little bit. Some aren't real sure of what to do right now, how to go about because of everything that you're hearing in the news and what's going on around us. No, we're not to be run or manipulated by fear, but we're to have caution. We're to have wisdom. Uh, we could talk about, you know, uh, some of the church meetings. We were talking about this a little bit. People get COVID-19 even in churches. We know we shared with you, or I shared with you about uh, the preacher that died from it when we were at the meeting where he was. And so we have to be wise about things in all these areas. But these men professed and they believed and they saw afar off as we read in Hebrews 11 there. Uh, and so they were willing to say and confess, this is not the end of it all for me. This is not the life for me. This isn't what I live for, what I breathe for. And listen, as believers, we have to uh, sometimes have to remind people that, you know, you're starting to look like you're loving this world. Uh, you'll be more committed to getting away to this or getting away to that than you are to getting away for the things of God. Or, you know, to be in these functions and those functions, but you're not so concerned about being in the gathering together of the saints. Something's getting off course in your life so that we don't leave people out there in the stray. So these believed the fear of God came on all the people, it says. They believed, they confessed, and they showed their deeds. So faith caused them to confess. And of course, they went even further and they burned the books. I've shared where when I first came to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I took my um, whatever it was for the month of August, my shirt with his Aquarius signs or whatever, and I cut it in shreds and then I burn it because I believe there was something to that, just like these men must have believed. Now, I didn't know this scripture back then. I did it just because as I was praying, I felt like I should. And so we see they did that also. So then in verse 19, it says, And many of them also which used curious 
arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And if you just took a one ounce silver coin today, about 16 bucks, multiply that times 50,000, you got a little bit of money. And especially if you said, well, I only make uh, 60 bucks a day, that's a pretty good amount of money. Okay? Along with that, then we could talk about some of the repercussions of our conversation and of our words. Uh, John 9.22, it talks about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it talks about uh, the man when he was healed, how they feared the Jews because the Jews had already agreed, it says, John 9, 22, that if any did confess that he, Jesus, was the Christ, they'd be put out of the synagogue. You remember Jesus uh, told us about that in John 16. He had warned the disciples the time was going to come when because of what you confess, which follows what you believe, you'll be put out of the synagogue. And in John uh, 12, 42, even uh, some among the chief rulers, it says, believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. At least they should be put out of the synagogue. So we understand that our confession may put us out of some things in the world, but it's what puts us in the right place in the eyes of the Lord. And so to hold that confession, hold fast the profession of your faith, without wavering for he is faithful that promised continue speaking the things of the lord continue proclaiming the good news continue believing and speaking that we're citizens of a place that the lord has opened up and built a country the lord has put together a house that the lord has prepared for us that we're going to see him very soon. Amen? Anybody want to say anything? I'll go ahead and stop with that. And I guess uh, we'll need somebody to stop with that. So anyway, I just want to thank you all for being on here listening with us. We're a little bit short-handed today. Oh, I guess the, both hands are about the same length, actually. Uh, we're a little short-handed on people, so we're moving around here. But uh, thank you for being here. Uh, there, we're going to talk more about our actions and various things that come from our faith and also just about how we should be solidified in the Lord, solid people uh, because of our faith in Christ and how that also affects our, uh, we kind of mentioned a little bit today when we talk about our conversation as a man thinketh, but how we should think in the faith that the Lord has put in our lives. So. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight. We're going to come back on and we'll do a little bit of praise and worship. And so you're welcome to join with us. Have a good night.